Everybody, Leonard Marshall is yeah, here. Right. Two-time Super Bowl New York Giant champion. Leonard, how are you? I'm doing fantastic now. Yes, it took, uh, we, we had to get everything started together, but we have him here. I'm so excited to have it. you here. Yep. Um, we have a ton of Giants fans up here. Thank so. you, baby. Any yep. Giants fans in the room? Yeah? Okay, we got yeah, a couple okay, nods. So, um, Leonard, you played under one of the greatest eras of New York Giants football. Can you tell us a little bit about that team and what made it so special and unique? Well, when I came here in 1983, Bill Parcells was a, a, a rookie head coach, mm -hmm. and um, he chose to draft another player in front of me that year by the mm. name of Terry Kennard. Mm -hmm. So I came here on a mission and a purpose. Now, my mission was to become one of the greatest defensive linemen to play in the red, white, and blue and to help this football team win a championship. What do you think made the team so great and so different and so unique? I think the nucleus of players. I think you had the old and guys like Harry Carson, George Martin, Brad Van Pelt, Phil Simms, and some of those guys. Mm -hmm. And then you had the new guys, the 1981 draft with Lawrence Taylor and some of those guys, the 1982 draft with Joe Morris, mm -hmm. the 1983 draft with myself and some other players, the 1984 draft with Carl Banks and players like that. Mm -hmm. And I think that thing just coming together like one big pot of gumbo. Uh huh. I could see you know that. I mean? It's a very interesting group. And how how was Bill? How did Bill Parcells manage that? Like, how was he as a coach? Bill Parcells could have did just about anything he wanted to do. Mm -hmm. I mean, he could have been the CEO of Walmart, Kmart, Target, Lowe's, <laughs> Sports Authority, you name it. I mean, he had a good knack for managing people, managing talent, mm -hmm. and then communicating with. African Americans and Hispanics. How, how so? That's interesting. How so? Well, what I think mean? that he 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 was a, a guy who grew up, you know, next to Hackensack. Mm. You know, if you know a little mm. bit about Jersey, mm -hmm. River Edge is right next to Hackensack. There's nothing but brothers and sisters in Hackensack, mm -hmm. and Hispanics in Hackensack, and then surrounded by Inglewood, Teaneck, and towns like that. He had to pretty much adopt that mentality that. I'm going to get to know them just like I want them to get to know me. Mm -hmm. So he was very relatable to you guys. And, exactly. You know, uh, how was he on the field as far as, you know, coaching and practice drills and all that stuff? Was he rough? A butthead? A butthead. <laughs> a butthead. I mean, you know, that was his deal. His was deal rough? was, yeah, I mean, his deal was, you know, he was a hood rat. He knew what to do. He okay, knew how to you heard that, guys. Here. Letter Marshall said Bill Parcells is a hood rat. He was grimy. I mean, he knew what he had to do. He, he brought his A game, and you had to respect him. Because he could understand you better than anybody else I ever been around. And he did an amazing job. You know, obviously, one of the great things that he's done with the New York Giants is the defense. I mean, I was still young during that time. Right. But I did look at some highlight reels and things like that. Right. And uh, mentioning you, you're known for having one of the most devastating hits Mm. In NFL history, mm, is that right? Football. Oh, yeah, I mean, ahead. I've been doing some research. Um, that was on the great Joe Montana. Now behind the giant bench, here's Montana, long time in the pocket, but chased out, finally hit from behind the ball. That was a hit. Like he snapped like a chicken, like a rubber band. I just saw him just go flat to the floor. Tell me what you were thinking, like as that play was happening. Did you did you know you're gonna hit him that hard and affect him that greatly? Well, I, I knew this. I knew that I was blocked. I slipped down. A guy dove at my feet. And all I can remember was crawling and crawling. And as I got up, I said, oh, you got the ball. <laughs> oh, my God. This going to turn into something real ugly. Yeah. And that's what it turned into, something real ugly. Wow. I mean, you go look at the play. I mean, he's on the ground. He's got a big chunk of turf in his, in his face mask. And... He was wheezing, and I'm like, you know, mm -hmm. You knew it was pretty bad from that point yeah, on. Yeah, I knew it was bad. I knew it was bad. Because I'm sure you guys know, but he went on to have cracked ribs, a bruised just stomach, and, and the whole shebang. Did you speak to him after that? Or? We've seen each other a couple of times at different autograph sessions around the country. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, my last one I worked was um, uh, Gary Takahashi's show in New Jersey. Um, um, and he happened to be there with Sims and Taylor and uh, a couple other guys. And, uh, you know, all I had to say to the guy was, you know, I hope you're healthy and, and life's treating you good. Was, you any, know, because, was there any uh, bad blood or anything? I don't think it, well, for me it wasn't. I mean, for me it was a football play. Right. You know, unfortunately it was a football play that changed the outcome of the game for them in a negative way, but for me in a positive way because I got another stone out of it. <laughs> I, I, I feel like you kind of shaped his destiny, right? Because he – 
he ended up not playing for the next two years because of the injury. Pretty much. And that kind of, and then he ended up leaving the Niners and went on to the Kansas City Chiefs. So he didn't retire as a Niners, I think, because of that hit. So I, I'm not trying to make you feel <laughs> bad or anything. <laughs> But, you know, it was just, it's interesting to see where he could have went if that hit didn't happen. Well, let's just say this, you know, I'm still waiting for a thank you card from Steve Young. Oh, yes. Steve, you owe it to Leonard, for sure. Because yeah. if that didn't happen, yeah. Steve Young There'd would not no have. Steve Young. Absolutely. He wouldn't be in no Hall of Fame either. Right. So, um, speaking, oh, obviously you played against the Niners during that NFC game. That moved on to the Super Bowl against the Bills. Mm-hmm. So, it's the fourth quarter, eight seconds left, right? You're up by oh, yeah. one. Oh, yeah. When that kicker shanks the field goal, what was going through your mind? Like, let's start from when he's on the field, eight seconds left. And I'm going to be own. perfectly honest with you. Yes. I turned to my father, who had walked down right behind the bench, Yeah. and I turned to him and I said, Pops, if he makes that field goal, you're not going to get that cadu. <laughs> But if he misses that field goal, you're going to get that Cadu and a trip to Disney World. You really said that to him? I did. Oh, wow. And that's what ended up happening. What was the feeling? What was, like, by one point, it could have been over. The feeling of exhilaration because I think what was going through my mind was Lawrence Taylor and I held out a training camp Mm -hmm. that entire summer. Mm -hmm. I fished in Florida the entire summer with my friend Chenzo. Mm -hmm. And, um, And I kept telling Chenzo, hey, man, You know, if it happens again, it happens. If it don't happen and I'm in New Orleans, I'm going to be the best saint they ever had in New Orleans, you know, because I'm from New Orleans. So I didn't think I was going to end up playing for the New York Giants again, but it just so happened that we saw the contract dispute. I went back to work, and I was able to participate that season and help us win another championship. It's incredible. Do you still talk to any of your old teammates? Talk to quite a bit of them all the time. Anyone in particular that you're super Um, with? It's hard because guys are moving and shaking. You know, my one teammate, Carl Banks, and I, we tend to see each other a lot because I go to games. I'm in the stadium. Mm -hmm. I go to uh, charitable affairs. I'm very philanthropic. Mm -hmm. Um, And I'm also out there to make my money, too. So Got to make that money. You know, and... uh, We like money around here. Yeah, I know. Money is money. (laughs) Money makes the world go round, so... So, um... Going back to your teammates and stuff, you played with two Hall of Famers, right? Lawrence Taylor and Harry Carson. Can you tell us yes. a little bit about their personalities and how they were? The Both of those guys are different. Like Lawrence is a Lawrence is the kind of guy that uh, um, you never know what he's thinking, and he does things of natural ability uh, as an athlete, and he transcends that into other sports that he plays, where it's just his natural talent takes over. Mm-hmm. Um, he's a competitor. Lawrence would bet a cockroach race if he could. <laughs> really? I'm telling you, he's a competitor <laughs> that way. Uh, but great guy, strong heart, tremendous leader, and uh, uh, has been a halfway decent father of late. Mm. Harry, um, a little bit of an introvert. Uh, the kind of guy that um, he's got to grind. He's got to grind to make it happen. Mm-hmm. Uh, wasn't as athletic as really? Lawrence. Wasn't as athletic, but was a smart football player, knew the scheme, knew where everybody had to be, could orchestrate that, and helped me to become a pretty good football player over my career. You would say he helped you better than LT did? Yeah, I, both guys had an integral role. I mean, Lawrence and I worked together a lot, but if you looked at our defensive scheme and the way we aligned most of the time, both of those guys got the benefit of playing next to number 70. Mm. You know, they kind of got a chance to make tackles <laughs> and – Sack quarterbacks while two guys tried to block me, you know. Were you close? Fun. Were you close with LT? Close with both of those guys. Close with a lot of my teammates. I love them all. I still love them all. How difficult was it? During, obviously, LT had a um, public problem, you know, with the drugs and the alcohol and stuff. So, how did that affect the locker room and the dynamic of the team? Him as a person, did you see well, any difference? You know, the, the thing with you know with me with him is. I would just more or less sit back and pray for him and pray that whatever demon that was taken over at that time, that he got rid of that demon, he could release that demon. Because I knew in my heart of hearts we came from the same background, same type of family structure. He loved his kids. He loved his wife, Linda. Um, He knew his teammates loved him. He loved his teammates in return. I think the, the, the deepest piece of that was Lawrence was probably one of the most misunderstood guys 
in our locker room because guys thought he was guys thought he was a little bit you know screwy at times, but it wasn't so much that he was screwy. Lawrence just liked to have fun, mm. you know, and he played this game the way he lived his life. He played this game wild and reckless. He lived his life wild and reckless, but we never judged him for it. We loved him for it because it helped bring us together. It Adversity did. helped bring us together. We pulled for him. We rooted for him. And we still pulled for him and rooted for him to win in the game of life. Was there any issues as far as, you know, having to play on the field? Did that affect it any? No. I mean, uh, hell, there's times he and I are out there, you know, we're playing the Redskins, and I, I swear to God, some of the stuff that I watched him do in the uniform, I thought he had a damn S underneath his, uh, on his chest underneath his uniform. Because really? some of that shit, Superman could be the only guy that could do that. Right. But he actually could do it mm -hmm. and do it better than probably anybody out there. Clearly he did. He went on to be a Hall of Famer, so obviously he's doing something right. And uh, speaking of going back to Harry Carson, um, I just read an article that you and him just found out you both were diagnosed with CTE. Is yes. that correct? So. Um, I know you've been in a few programs talking about that. So to the viewers who don't know what that is, can you kind of explain to them what it is? CTE is chronic traumatic encephalopathy. It affects the frontal lobe and the surrounding of the brain. And what happens is with CTE, over time, it turns into ALS, or what most people know as the Lou Gehrig disease. What we are fighting for now is to try to find means and ways to get supplements, to use medicines to use applications such as hyperbaric chamber work to remedy CTE and provide more oxygen into the brain to help you live a more quality life. So is this, um, just to go into that a little bit, it, this is linked to all those de the debate in the NFL for quite some time about concussions and hits in the NFL and how that affects your psyche, the player's psyche later on in life, right? The debilitating head injury is very evident, extremely prominent, in professional football more than any other sport mm -hmm. right how did you how did you find this out is you know i from what i know from what i've read you know players like junior say out you know after he committed suicide people thought there was a link to the hits in, in the field and stuff like that he um, donated his brain to science and that's the way they were able to figure out and kind of pinpoint what it really was obviously you you didn't do that so how did you go about figuring this out and you know be diagnosed with Okay, this. five months ago, I submitted myself to a research study at UCLA. UCLA, with okay. With Dr. With Dr. Uh, Billy West and his wife, Shelly, mm -hmm. out of Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and a scan called the Tarmark scan. Now, tall protein on the brain is what causes CTE. Tall protein is a buildup, a well, buildup in the brain. It's a protein buildup in the brain that comes as a result of being concussed multiple times and it not being treated mm -hmm. properly, mm -hmm. properly. So when Dr. West and his wife and Dr. Smalls at UCLA asked Tony Dorsett, Joe DeLamalore, myself, and Mark Duper, would we engage ourselves in the process and allow ourselves to be tested? I said yes, because I want to know. Mm -hmm. I want to know for multiple reasons. I want to know because of the settlement that's come down the pike, so that I know that it'd be money there to take care of me mm -hmm. in my in my quest to live a quality life and fight ALS. How do you think this will affect the league if, if this comes out? Well, well, the program. How do I know? think it'll affect? I think it'll affect the league big time because it'll impact the lives of kids and parents and grandparents and loved ones who watch eight to twelve year olds now play the game. Yeah. 13 to 15 year olds that now play the game, 16 to 18 year olds that are looking to go to college and what they're going to do. Now, let me ask you something. Is this something, CTE, something you physically feel? Is it a pain? Do you go through emotions? Like, what is the symptoms? I guess I could say symptoms. Yeah, you can say it? symptoms. I'll tell you, I'll give you some of them. Are you yourself going through these? Yes. Symptoms? Okay. And I'll give you some of them. Some of them are you feel like you're on an emotional roller coaster ride. You have your highs and your lows and your highs and your lows and your highs and your lows. You become aggressive. You tend to not sleep well. You have anxiety attacks. Uh, an inordinate amount of headaches. Uh, in my case, I have four ruptured discs in my neck. See, two through seven are ruptured in my neck. So I either have to have that surgery or live with this pain for the rest of my life.
-hmm. okay? And most of it's because of the times that I was concussed while I wore the red, white, and blue. Really? Gang green and the garnet and gold in Washington, D.C. So for me, the, the, the biggest challenge with CTE is the frontal lobe area of my brain is damaged and it's severely damaged. Really? That controls your emotions. That controls your ability to think and react. It also affects your balance on a daily basis mm -hmm. in terms of all activities that you do. So whether it be exercise on the treadmill, walking with your child, walking in the mall, taking a normal bike ride, whatever chore you look to do, that has now been affected because of development of CTE. So how do you how do you get through the day? Like what do you what do you do? You, you know what I mean? You you keep taking supplements you keep utilizing the meds and the applications that the medical community has provided for you okay. to improve your quality of life. Mm -hmm. You know, and this is the, that, what that $75 million piece that everybody keeps reading about, mm -hmm. that's where that money should be going right now. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's what that money should be doing. It should, should be supporting that part of a guy trying to get himself healthy. I mean, six months ago, they were gonna pay out this money. September. Six months later, there's not one nickel that's been dispersed to any one particular player, wow. including myself, Mr. Dorsett, Mr. Delamalor, and Mr. Duper, who have publicly come out and said, here's the results of the study I participated in. They turned the blind eye. I'm the living, living with CT. I'm not Mr. Sayal or Mr. Durison, whose family are no longer have their husband's father, friend, best friend in their lives anymore. I'm amongst the living. It's a cruel business, for sure. How do you feel now? Like Every feel day well? every day is a new day. Mm -hmm. Every day I wake up like this. Every day is a new day. Mm -hmm. And I'm challenged, but yet I'm driven. And I won't quit. I can't quit. You're not. You're Leonard Marshall. You won't That's right. quit. I could never quit. <laughs> it's really amazing. I could never quit. Well, I'm, you know, I wish the best for you, and Thank hopefully you. things work out with the NFL. I mean, we know how they are, but, you know, hopefully they pay more attention to what's really going on to their Let's players. Let's see what's happening. If we run. keep it on and popping and keep it young, you know, keep, and educate the youth. Yes. All our young brothers and sisters and, you know, Boricuas out there that's trying <laughs> to come up the ladder, you know, and trying to get on, get their game on, mm -hmm. you know. Hopefully they get educated and they come to learn and understand what the challenge is going to be going forward. Right. You know, to us, it's a game. To us, I got a chance to play a kid's game for a king's ransom for as long as I wanted and Who to. wouldn't love that? Who wouldn't love mm -hmm. that? But did I know that oh. I was going to walk away from this game with a debilitating illness that would affect me for the rest of my life? Where's the trade-off? Well said. Well Where's the trade-off? That's well said. Absolutely. Leonard, um, I kind of want to gear away from, well, we'll still want to talk about football, but this is just a very interesting topic. I'm glad you're talking about this because a lot of people don't know the effects of it. Mm -hmm. And you yourself were going through it. You know, it's it's amazing to hear. Have so. to educate our community, baby. That, that, that's, that's the thing you must do. If we don't do that, we could never unite. That's right. I love your one-liners. You does some great one-liners, so, for real. <laughs> that's, what's, that's what's happening. Cool. So um, I wanted to ask you, let's brighten up a little bit, some let's random go. questions. Let's go. Um, so first one, how do you feel about the New York Giants right now, their past season, and Eli Manning? I kind of second the sentiments of their owner, John Mara, that I felt like we had a broken offense this year. We couldn't score points. We couldn't get the ball down the field. We lack progressiveness at the tight end and running back position. Um, I'm watching Martellus Bennett catch passes in uh, Chicago, <laughs> and I'm watching our running backs go down like, uh, you know, like it's, uh, you know, uh, peewee football. I'm like, you know, there's something wrong here. Mm -hmm. Our quarterback has probably the worst season in football. Um, well, what do, you, what do you think of Eli? Do you think he's I think Eli is a very good football player. I think okay. Eli Manning is a very good football player. I think Eli Manning has probably been the most productive quarterback of his time. Uh, you don't just beat Tom Brady in two Super Bowls 
and not be a, a, a top right. flight quarterback mm-hmm. uh, and, and a student of the game. So I think that the Giants have to, in order to start repa- repairing the team they have and moving forward, have to repair the offense mm-hmm. and have to improve on defense. That has been the calling card of the New York Giants before I joined the team, while I joined the team, and well after I left the team. And it needs to continue. There's a rumor going around, too. I don't know if you can address this, but Tom Coughlin, there's a rumor going around that he's going to be tired and not come back next season. Do you know anything about that? No, I don't know about that. There's a, there's a talks going around. Talks I mean, going around that he's going to retire? That he was planning to retire after this past season, and, and that's it. He was going to hang it up. Well, Tom, I, I, I think you need another defensive tackle to come in at uh. You know, a guy with, like, you know, almost 100 sacks at his position. And, uh, you know, even though he might be, like, 52 years old now, but uh, I think you could pull him out of retirement for $6 million. Mm. I'll give him I'll give him a half. <laughs> Will you really? I'll give him, I'll give him hey, 32 Tom. plays a game. Yeah? I'm serious. All right. <laughs> Keep that in mind. Let's not forget that. Um, you play for the Jets and the Redskins. So, Jets or Redskins, if you had to choose? Um, I'm a I, Jets fan, by the way. I really wanted yeah. to win a championship for Leon Hess. Did you? That was the reason why I joined the Jets. I thought that I did everything I could do in the Giants uniform um, when I made the decision to leave the Giants and go to the Jets. And um, I really liked that challenge of trying to win for him. You know, I got tired of hearing all this stuff about Joe Namath and, <laughs> and you know, their Super Bowl in the 1960s or whatever it was. And, you know, I wanted to be a guy, one of the guys that helped change the face of the team and then be the new face, you know, along with Ronnie Lott and Boomer Esiason and James Hasty and a number of different guys. Mm-hmm. So you would say Jets over Redskins then? I would say Jets over Redskins. Ha-ha! In your face, Rosenberg. Uh, there's a there's a guy here by Peter Rosenberg who's a Redskins fan, so <laughs> amazing you said that. Love it. Um, what's something we don't know about Leonard Marshall? Mm. A talent or just something that no one would expect? What's something that you know about her? I'm a mama's we don't know. boy. Mama's boy. I love my mother to death. Mm-hmm. She's the greatest lady ever to me. And uh, she would have been alive yesterday. We would have celebrated her 75th birthday yesterday. So. Um, well, happy birthday, Mama Marshall. Yeah. Yeah. Love so it. that's, I think that's something that a lot of people don't know. What's your greatest fear? Fear itself. Mm hmm. Fear itself. I fear no man. I fear no mammal. I hate snakes. I don't like spiders. <laughs> okay. Uh, I think most of us can relate to that. So. And bears will definitely make me run. Bears, yeah. Bears will definitely seen one? make me run. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> what was that? And experience? I seen his ass for about a second too. <laughs> <laughs> what yeah. was that experience? About like? a second. <laughs> That's about what I saw. About a second. You know. <laughs> I, 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 it'll be a long time before I go to, uh, what do they call it, Mount, Mount Airy, Pennsylvania? I be think it's called, yeah. be a long time. Cool. What's, what are you listening to, uh, listening to now? What's hot your 9 7, my, Oh, Hot 9-7. My, 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 bang, my banging, I like my banging, you know, my old school groups like Cameo, um, Confunction, Brass Construction, Mass Production. Um, I'm a big Parliament Funkadelic fan. Okay. Uh, Bootsy's Rubber Band was the joint back in the day for me. I still listen to it. When I get my R&B on, I like my Anita Baker. Anita Baker. I like my uh, uh, Phyllis Hyman. We might have to start playing some music in here, you know, guys. I, I like some of that <laughs> stuff. You know, I'm a, I'm a jazz guy. I listen to very little rock and roll. Did you have a record you listened to before you hit the field to get you pumped up? Because I feel like every athlete has that Public one song. Public Enemy. Which song? Fight the Power. That makes me want to go kill someone. On that the was field. the dopest <laughs> jam for me back in the day. <laughs> I could see why. P.E. in full effect. Awesome, awesome. How do you feel about the Super Bowl being in the New York, New Jersey area this year? I wish the Giants were in it. I knew you were going to say that. Yeah, I, mean, I knew the Giants were in it. But, yeah, I mean, uh, you know. the deal is I, I'm happy that it's in the area. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have a banging Super Bowl party, pregame party going on January 30th. Oh, yes. Talk in about Wayne, that, In New please. Jersey at Tiffany's Ale House. Okay. Uh, on Route 23 North. Okay. In Wayne, Wayne Paquanic. Come on out. Get your grown and sexy on. <laughs> I got a cheerleader competition going on. I'm looking for the 50th hottest girls in New Jersey. Oh, ladies, you hear this? Get ready. Hottest cheerleaders in New Jersey. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to crown three. The winner wins 
anywhere from a thousand to five thousand dollars in cash Ooh. and a full spread in metropolis magazine ladies if you are ready do not turn this down and come out and show some love who do you see uh, who do you think uh, is going to win the super bowl this year uh, offense wins games but defense wins championships mm-hmm. and i think that seattle has a better defense really i do you think so even I against do. Peyton Manning? They remind me of the 86 Giants. I do. Wow. They play hard. All right. If you Real hard. So. Oh, speaking of the Seahawks, I can't forget without saying Go this. Ahead. Richard Sherman. Now. My man. Okay. Because there's been a lot of controversy about him, that sideline rant that people have been talking about, you know, going in on Crabtree. Do you think it was inappropriate, as most people say it is? I thought it was just straight up passion. You know what I mean? You're on the field. Someone's talking smack in your ear. You know, you make an awesome play in front of his face. You're just gonna, you're just gonna go in. I think it's passion. I hate the fact that he took away a little bit of the thunder from his team. Oh, they had really? just won okay. the NFC Championship game, mm. and act like you've been there before. Act like you've done it before. So you're a little show offended. the professional that you really are. Deal with that scrub on the side, but show who. Don't take that. Don't steal your teammates' thunder. You think he was just ODing a little yeah, bit? Yeah, I think he was ODing a little bit in himself. Well, he's yeah. naturally just a passionate football player. I mean, he constantly talks trash all the time. No so doubt. No doubt. I guess it just got the best of him, right? Uh, to an extent, yeah. To an extent, yeah. Okay. I mean, we want, listen, we want to see our gladiators, you know, uh, and our brothers go out there and celebrate and enjoy and win big and, you know, pump it up and everything else. But football's a team sport. It's a team sport. It's a group of individuals that learn how to come together over a 35-day period in the summer, Mm -hmm. which they call training camp, and then take that thing to the stage for 17 weeks to win that title. Mm -hmm. So my thing is, is don't try to take it all, baby. Share the wealth. Mm -hmm. It's there. Share the wealth. You heard that, Richard Sherman? Better fall back next time. Well... If he wins the Super Bowl, hopefully it won't be that crazy and he won't go in as much as we think yeah, he would. We'll see. The jury's still out on him. But you know <laughs> what the deal is? Hey, Rich, keep doing what you're doing, brother, because what you're doing, you're bringing fanfare to the game and you're keeping it 100. So yes. keep doing what you're doing. And on that note, Leonard, thank you so much for stopping by. You're welcome. I love this interview. I really appreciate it. It's an honor to sit in front of you. Thank you, darling. And okay. and nice to, nice to be here. And a shout-out to my boy at Radio Entertainment One Okay. for making it happen. And don't forget to come through to his event on January 30th if you want to win some money. Wayne, New Jersey. Enjoy. Tiffs, have a good time. Me and Fat Tony Saragusso. Oh.